Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to hear it in, in Chinese. Good afternoon. Very good. Very good. I like that. I have had a wonderful day today. I had a good time in the International Church. A very friendly group. I felt they are like at home. Most of the church members are ladies. <laughs> and I tell you this. I have six sisters. <laughs> you see, I felt at home. <laughs> then I married a lady. I had two daughters. <laughs> and I have two granddaughters. <laughs> the ladies tamed me. Wow. <laughs> Huh? If a lady says, Angel, I jump and say, yes. <laughs> Very obedient. <laughs> so I had a good time there. <laughs> now this afternoon we're going to continue talking about um, trends in Adventist theology. Those who, those, I'm sorry, those who were here for the first part will probably remember that I was able to address only one item. Do you remember? What was it about? Church growth. See, I'm, this, I'm, I'm talking to you about good things because church growth is good. And we need that. And we need it here. And everywhere. But church growth could potentially could contribute to polarize the theology of the church. And the second uh, potential source of tension, theological tension in the church. Is the ecclesiastical world organization, the organization of the church. There's nothing wrong with our church organization. In fact, it has been a tremendous blessing for this church. And I believe that the Lord led this church to create this system. So we divided the church, we have the general conference, and we divided the world. We have, we have divisions. And then within the divisions you have unions. You have unions of churches. You have conferences. You have missions. You have fields. And this has been wonderful. So what is the risk here? National churches.
This is something that, that we as church leaders have to be aware of. We have unions, we have unions, and many of the unions are constituted by one country. And it's very easy for any country to say, let's develop an Asian or a European Adventist theology. And I tell you this, I can give you a name, but I'm not going to do it, of a country where uh, leaders met. And, and theologians men and they began to talk along these lines we need a theology of this country an Adventist theology of this country and one of the persons in the meeting, one of the persons stood up and said, listen, if we do that, we, we would be breaking away from the world church. And they said, yeah, so they stopped. You have to be careful because it's very easy for each one of us in our own countries to concentrate on our own countries and forget the world church. <laughs> so you develop a kind of, uh, of uh, regional congregationalism. So it would be a mistake for the church in, for instance, Asia to say, well, let's develop an Asian Adventist theology. Because there is no such a thing as an American Adventist theology, an African Adventist theology, a South, a South American Adventist theology. There is such a thing as a, an Adventist biblical theology. And this theology that constitutes the message that we have is for the whole world. So leaders in every region of the world have, and this is, I'm talking to pastors, you know, you are leaders, you, 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 you have to keep always in mind the world church. You have to remind your church members that they belong to something larger than the local congregation. Larger than the conference and the union. And larger than the division. We belong to a world church. This, yeah. With a unique message. The, the third 
potential source of tensions and division. The story of Adventist history. It is good to study our history. It is good. History. History. Our Adventist history. The story of Adventist history. It's good. There's nothing wrong with that. In, in fact, during the last uh, probably 25 years, Adventist historian has been studying the history of the Adventist Church. And this has been very good. It has been very good for the church and it has been very good for theologians and for everybody. See, we study that history and we see the hand of the Lord guiding this movement is is wonderful. I don't know whether you have a written history of the Adventist Church in China or Hong Kong. Do we have you see, it's, it's, it's a good thing to, to look back and see how the Lord has been leading us. So there's nothing wrong with that. But some have misused that. And I'm going to give you a few examples that hopefully you don't have here. But it could be that you have some of them. We have, a, in different parts of the world, we have a group of individuals who began to study Adventist, the history of Adventist doctrines. And they discovered that most of our pioneers did not believe in the Trinity. And they said, oh, then we should not believe in the Trinity today. The church made a mistake. And they initiated an anti-Trinitarian movement. And they have divided churches. Why? They say if it was good for the pioneers, it is good for us. We should not believe in the Trinity. I told one of them once, I told one to one of them that before Adventists got involved with the health reform, some Adventist ministers used to preach with a cigar. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, was preaching and he needed energy. <laughs> and some of them chew tobacco. 
And that is the problem. Because you need a container somewhere by the pulpit where after chewing for a while you will <laughs> and Ellen White wrote about that and she said this is a filthy habit vice we should stop that and then the health message came and we stopped we, we stopped doing that and, and as you can see I'm preaching without a cigar <laughs> yes I don't need a cigar so the pioneers are not the standard Sorry. the pioneers are not the standard there was a time when Adventist worship was kind of Pentecostal. And you have the people shouting and falling down. And the Lord gave instructions to Ellen White. And he said to her, emotions are not the most important thing in worship. The most important thing is the proclamation of the word. And he took us from this kind of Pentecostal worship and moved us away from that. And some Adventists have, have gone to the other extreme. They have forgotten, they have forgotten that we have emotions. They have forgotten, some of these others have forgotten that we have emotions. And, and that em, uh, uh, emotions that are controlled are fine. That we can sing with joy in our hearts. Uh, with the Trinity, in the it took a little time for the Lord to move us from where we were to where we are now. And this happened, particularly happened, when we began to study the atonement. Around the 1880s. And we began to understand that in order for Jesus to save us, he had to be divine. That, that in order for him to give us life, he could not be a creature. He had to be the source of life in order for Jesus to give us life. I give you another example related to Adventist history. Some individuals studied what the pioneers believed about the human nature of Christ. And they discovered that most of our pioneers believed that Jesus had a human fallen nature. 
佢哋相信話咧，原來耶穌都佢嘅人性咧係咩嚟㗎？係嗰啲已經係叫做有罪嘅人性啊，係堕落咗嘅人性啊。And these individuals go everywhere。咁呢班人士咧，相信咁樣咧，佢哋周圍去。Teaching that Christ took a fallen human nature. 就話俾大家聽，話俾啲信眾聽，話主耶穌基督當時佢嚟到世間上邊嘅時候，佢已經係有墮落嘅人性喺度。And the Adventist Church today is in apostasy because it is not teaching that. 所以安息會咧，有啲地方咧就教導緊呢樣背道嘅一個咁樣嘅信仰。So you understand what I mean by the story of Adventist history? Hmm? Is potentially a source of polarization. So you can see that when we are following the history of the church, there will be a divide between the church and the world. The Adventist Church has addressed the issue of the polarization. The Adventist Church has the Adventist Church has addressed the issue of the nature of Christ. So when we are following the history of the church, there will be a divide between the church and the world. The Adventist Church has addressed the issue of the nature of Christ. So when we are following the history of the church, there will be a divide between the church and the world. The Adventist Church has addressed the issue of the nature of Christ. 所以如果你去到我哋嘅基本信仰嘅話 ，you will find three that they they say three things, three main things about the nature of Christ. 關於主耶穌基督嘅本性咧，佢哋提到有三點。Number one， 第一 ，that Jesus was fully divine。主耶穌基督咧，佢係全然神性嘅。This the church clearly affirms。今日都係我哋係教嘅咧，都係認認誒確認嘅。That when the word became flesh， 當道成肉身嘅時候 ，the word in the word was the fullness of God。呢個道成到肉身嘅時候咧，喺個肉身裏邊咧，佢係全然係係神。Not a god, a mutilated god. 而唔係一個混合咗嘅誒誒一位誒一位基督。Not a god who left some of his attributes in heaven. 而唔係話咧，佢仲帶咗一啲嘅神性嘅咧，就成為人。Fully god. 佢係完全係神嚟嘅。We also say that he was Jesus was fully human. 但係第二樣嘢咧，就講到話咧，佢又係全然係人。It was not that he looked like a human. So, not just saying that his outside appears like a man. No, no, he became a human being. No, he the fact is that he became a human being. He became our brother. 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 佢雖然處嘅神咧，但係佢又係無罪嘅。A mystery， 係一個奧秘。The only human being， 唯一嘅人類 ，born on this planet after the fall， 係人類犯咗罪之後，然後係出世嘅一個人 ，who was without sin， 而又係無罪嘅。What a wonderful thing！ And that's why he can save us. Because the one who had not sinned was made sin for us. This is the substitution that my colleague was talking about. We say these three things. So we say, "Oh, we just said three things." Because that's what the Bible says. Because the Bible says that God is divine, human, without sin. Human, 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 but without sin. This is what you read in the Bible. The question of whether He took the human nature of Of Adam before the fall or after the fall. 嗰個問題就話咧，佢佢變成人嘅時候咧，佢嗰個人啊，係阿當未犯罪之前嘅嗰個人咧，定係係後來嘅人咧 ？That the church has not defined. 而呢個咧，就係教會仲未去到最終嘅答案嘅地方。And I praise the Lord for that. 而我哋可以為呢件事感謝上帝。
because no one no one knows what happened in the womb of Mary at the moment of the incarnation. No one. This is the most profound mystery in the whole universe. How could it be that this this all powerful God who created this this cosmos? How could it be that he became flesh in the womb of a woman? No one can explain that. And we as a church, we have said, this is a mystery. The Bible doesn't reveal what happened there. And therefore, we remain silent where the Bible is silent. Now, it doesn't mean that you cannot study by yourself. You want, you want to study and come to your own conclusion, that's fine. The church says it's fine. And as long as you do that, there is no theological polarization. The, the polarization comes in when you want to impose your own views on others. And, and, you know, you go to a church, you have a, you're the teacher in the Sabbath school, and you begin to say, this is, this is what we have to believe. And there are other members who have a different opinion. And you have a fight, a division. The unity of the church is damaged. So in that case, you can discipline that church member. You, 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 would, you could discipline him or her not because he has a particular view on the human nature of Christ. But because the person is dividing the church and that goes against a doctrine that we have. Is that clear? Say Amen if it's clear. Amen. Okay, you tell them to say Amen if it's clear. <laughs> um, uh, may I give you another example? Come on, just baby. Is that okay? Or you don't want more examples? You want? Oh, you like well, see, <laughs> uh, Let me give you another example. It has to do with the doctrine of uh, salvation. Or to be more specific, the doctrine of righteousness by faith. In uh, around the 1950s, a small group of individuals began to study the history of the doctrine of righteousness by faith in the Adventist Church. 
啊，凡係有關呢，即係因信稱義嘅嗰個。This became a very important、uh, doctrinal point in in eighteen eighty eight. Two individuals during the eighteen eighty eight general conference session in Minneapolis. Two individuals had. Presentations, papers on the doctrine of righteousness by faith, and Ellen G. White supported them. She said that they were bringing a message for, from the Lord. There was、uh, there was quite a bit of discussion there, and some of the leaders rejected the message. Now these friends that I was talking to you, the small group that was studying this, they 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 found out. That a large number of church leaders rejected the message. Then they found that, hey, in the time, there are many Calvinists who rejected the message. And these two brothers, they said, 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 They are today still rejecting the message. And that they are withholding the message from the church. And they concluded that the Lord had. Called them. So, the Lord sent them to bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. To bring the message of righteousness by faith to the church. And they're still they're still creating problems. The truth is that after the 1888, Ellen G. White and Jones and Wagner. They form a team, and they went throughout the church in North America, proclaiming the message of righteousness by faith. And they worked so hard that after several years, Ellen G. White and Jones and Wagner indicated. That the church has received the message. See, when we study Adventist history, you have to take into consideration everything. So, in fact, when you study Adventist history, you have to take into consideration everything. In order to see how the Lord has been leading the church, and He's still He's still leading us. So, in fact, today 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 He's still leading us. Can be avoided if we remember. That the Adventist message is based on the Scriptures. And that the Lord 
have been has been guiding the movement from the very beginning. The next one, the next area of potential um, polarization. Is the story of theology. The story of theology. Nothing wrong. I love theology. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the story of theology. But it could be a source of theological polarization. So I tell you a story. Around the 1950, a number of Adventist Bible teachers went to non-Adventist in fact, we don't have any theology, theological seminar. They went to, to theological seminaries. To, to obtain doctoral degrees. The church wanted the, to improve the quality of theological training for pastors. So we send some to these uh, other Christian seminaries. And this happened in North America, in Europe, and in South America. Now these uh, individuals went into a world about which we didn't know that much. This is, this is the time when uh, modernism was controlling everything. Even the, the teaching of theology. The historical critical method for the study of the Bible uh, formulated on the basis of, of uh, modernity. Uh, was being used in the seminaries. It was being being uh, it was being used in the seminaries. And, and the Adventist understanding of the scripture and how to study the scriptures was challenged in the mind of these theologians who went there. And some of them came back to teach in our institutions. And they brought with them the liberal methodology of Protestant uh, theology. So they put aside the historicist method of prophetic interpretation that we talked about this morning. And a number of other things. Many others who went to many others who went to those seminaries and universities came back. And they, they preserved the Adventist faith. 
And now then we had in our system of education a tension. A number of theologians using liberal hermeneutics. And a, and a number of Adventist theologians who remain loyal to the methodology and the approaches to the Bible that the Adventist Church has used. And since the 60s, we have had this tension in some of our schools. And the root of some of the problems that we are facing today in the field of theology, the roots is, are found in, in this history. So the whole discussion that we are facing now, this whole discussion on creation versus natural evolution. It's, it goes back to liberal theology. So we have a, a small number of Adventist theologians who believe in theistic evolution. The idea that God used evolution to create. And they set aside Genesis 1 and 2. So, the idea that God used evolution to create. And it is also from, from that nest of liberal theology that, that some theologians are promoting same-sex marriages. But I want to make this clear to you. This is an extremely small number of theologians. I have been traveling for years around the world, meeting with Adventist theologians. And I can tell you without any doubt, that the vast majority of Adventist theologians are fully committed to the mission and the message of the church. So do not leave this place thinking, wow, the church is collapsing. This church is in the hands of the Lord. And only a small portion of Adventist theologians are promoting the wrong views. And the last uh, potential source of polarization is the study of the Bible. Something wrong with studying the Bible, am I right? Nothing wrong. In fact, we want people to study the Bible. 
梗係冇問題啦。我哋咪係要即係恢復翻讀聖經啊，聖經嘅瞭解聖經嘅故事。And the 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 movement,、uh, the call to reform that is、uh, been proclaimed throughout the world church is a call for church members to go back to the Bible to study the Bible. 全靠啊！講話要奮鬥嘅時候，我哋話話就係要鼓勵全球嘅信徒都要勤讀聖經啊嘛。And I tell you, I I I want you to study the Bible even more. So I want you to read more of the Bible. So why is the study of the Bible a potential source of diversity in the church? Why is the study of the Bible a potential source of diversity in the church? I'm seeking words. Ah, 喺度谂紧啲字啊。Every one of us. 每一只字咧。When we open the scripture. 尤其是当你打开圣经嘅时候。And we pray. 我哋祈祷嘛嗬。We ask the Spirit to help us understand the scripture. 我哋祈求上帝嘅灵咧，系令到我哋可以明白圣经嘅说话。We do. 我哋咁样做系咪 ？And the Spirit helps us. So there is an individual reading of the scripture guided by the spirit. So you will see that there is a collective person who is guided by the spirit to understand the meaning of the scripture. But there is also a collective reading of the scripture. It is also a collective reading. 上帝接到會中俾佢哋一啲嘅誒誒誒旨意嘅。It is a it was as a result of the collective reading of the scripture that our doctrines were formulated。亦都係因為咧，整體因為經過研究聖經咗之後咧，咁就有所謂教會性嘅一個繞度咧，先至會出嚟嘅。And now you also have the individual。所以有一個別嘅研讀聖經啦。So one day, one of your church members come to you, comes to you, and he said, Pastor, I was studying the Bible last night, and the Spirit guided me, and I was studying the topic of tithing. 咁我就喺度誒瞭解到咧關於誒誒誒十分一嘅話題。And I, I found this this passages in Deuteronomy. 誒，尤其是喺《生命記》講及到誒十分一嘅問題啊。That says that that we can use the tithe and and help the poor. 咁啊，我哋可以攞嚟用咧去幫嗰啲貧窮嘅人啊。And the Spirit impressed me. 所以上帝嘅靈就感動我。And I realized. That the church is wrong. That the church is wrong. That that we should each one of us should use the tithe and give it to the poor. So we, everyone, we should do that. We should give the tithe and give it to the poor. So we, everyone, we should do that. We should give the tithe and give it to the poor. So we, everyone, we should do that. The story of the Bible. The individual coming to his. His or her own conclusions. 係同一個個別嘅人士，佢研讀聖經嘅時候咧，係佢角度係咁樣啦。Conclusions that are in conflict with the collective reading of the scripture of the church. 佢嘅理解嘅結論咧，係同整體性嘅個理解咧。And the result is. 所以咪有緊張啦。Tension, division. 所以就帶嚟咗分裂啦。Now this is this is a difficult, a difficult、uh, issue, very difficult to solve. If you go to the Catholic Church, they have the best solution. But not the right one. So, a good solution, but not the right solution. See, the the Catholic Church. Created what is called the magisterium, the the a group of individuals who define for the church what the church has to believe. They have a kind of caste system, 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 a kind of caste system,
So the, the Pope meets with the bishops. And, and, and they make a theological pronouncement that is infallible. And the church member doesn't have to study the Bible. The church, the, 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 this group of individuals define for them what they have to believe. The Protestants have not, they have not been able to deal with this issue. And the issue is the individual reading of the scripture versus the collective reading of the scripture by the church. That's the issue, how, how the two function. And the result has been among, among the Protestants, the result has been more and more and more and more churches. And here we are. How can we deal with this? It's very difficult. I have two suggestions. Number one. Every one of us and every new convert should know the Adventist message well. Should, should be persuaded by reading the scriptures that this is biblical truth. Each one of us has to be solidly and firmly established on the message. This is indispensable for the church to function well. Such a knowledge will provide for each one of us what is called discernment. The capacity. We will know the scripture so well that if while reading the scripture, an idea pop up on our head, in our heads. We will immediately say, no, this is, I'm thinking about this, but this cannot be because the Bible really teaches this. So you, you have a foundation, a foundation that would allow you to evaluate your own, your own creativity. Number two, I will tell, I will say that it is important for all of us to be humble, not to think that the Lord can only speak through me. Lenji White explicitly says that if we have come up with a new idea, we should go to the brethren of experience. Share with them and follow their advice.
in a church like ours, these two elements are very important to keep us together. There would always be a little tension between the individual reading of the scripture and the reading of the scripture of the church. But it would, be, it would be easier to manage that if each one of us know the message and is humble. So if you can see these potential sources of polarization, are not in themselves bad, but they can be misused. And I shared this with you in order to alert you. But having said this, I, I have to tell you, the Adventist Church, with rare exceptions here and there, the Adventist Church is very, very well united on the message. And, and what, you, what you are witnessing is the beginning of something glorious and wonderful. This, this message will enlighten the whole humanity. God bless you.